Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. This video is brought to you by me. About a year ago now, I released a book for people who are on the spectrum or feel that they might be, and for those that love them, live with them, or work with them. It was called Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire, and it's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. Be sure to check out the free sample at Amazon using the link in the video description. I haven't released much content on the ASD side of things this year as I've been busy writing a follow-up book intended for people who might have some of the light symptoms of ASD without them rising to the level of a disorder, or what they used to call Asperger's or Asperger's Light or PDD. I thought I would run some of the topic drafts by you here and get some feedback from you in the comments. What do you like? What do you disagree with? I changed the name of the Autism Focus channel to A Little Bit Autistic in case you've noticed the change. I'm going to release this one video on both channels and then, now that people know about it, I'll keep the ASD content on the other channel. So if you're interested in topics related to ASD, please make sure you subscribe to the channel A Little Bit Autistic. Today's topic is the telephone, something that I struggle a great deal with. It's not like I can't talk on the phone or that I stutter or clam up. I'm just not good at it, I really dislike it, and thought I would take an introspective look at why that is. And here's what I came up with. Hating the telephone. I avoid talking on the telephone. I dislike people calling me and I'm uncomfortable calling most people. It's not much better when I know the person either. Even speaking to my wife on the phone feels somehow stilted, remote, and disconnected. In an emergency, if it were practical, I would prefer to email 911. Come to think of it, I do pretty much everything by text or email these days, from purchasing my house to having my cars restored to dealing with insurance agents or even buying football tickets. If a phone call needs to be made, I'll often ask my wife to make it for me, and if she cannot or will not, a genuine fear of dread can come over me if it's going to be a complex call. When I was at Microsoft, one of my earliest friends and managers there, Mark T.A., made a deal with me. He said that if we were ever talking on the phone and wanted to end the call, we could just say goodbye and do so without any fanfare. It was just easier, he argued, than doing that dance people have to do at the end of most social phone calls. Lucky for me, I was terrible at that dance. And to this day, I'm still not sure whether this offer was for his benefit or mine. People with autism may have difficulty using a telephone for a number of other reasons, some of which may even seem paradoxical at first. For example, they may like disusing a telephone because they find it overwhelming or stressful to attempt to initiate or accept a phone call on the telephone. Perhaps that's because they're not able to see the person with whom they are talking, and they have difficulty not being able to see the non-verbal cues such as facial expressions and body language. In my own case, because I'm never quite sure when it's my turn to talk, it can lead to poor conversation flow at best and create confusion at worst. As a contrived example, somebody might make a statement as banal as, I believe in discount bus passes for war widows. Now, there's an implied social contract amongst the neurotypical whereby, if somebody makes such a statement that calls for a prompt response, they expect an immediate agreement, such as, yes, of course. If instead I'm still waiting to see if the other person is actually done speaking and that it is indeed my turn to answer, that added delay suddenly seems suspect somehow. Maybe I'm secretly against such discounts for all they know. Such a mistake can create a misunderstanding, and somebody with ASD might even then have a hard time noticing the sudden discomfort in the other party. Or if they sense it at all, they might be oblivious to the reason why it happened. These misunderstandings may not occur during an in-person conversation because the listener with ASD may get whatever the prompt is via the speaker's facial expressions or body language. So where's the paradox? What well, lies in the fact that the very people who have the most trouble reading out-of-band social communication channels, such as facial expressions and body language, seem to be at an even greater disadvantage without those very clues. If they can read them only poorly, why would they still create a marked deficit when absent? Perhaps this all goes back to mind blindness and how difficult it can be for some people to construct their theory of the other, which is to say, what the other person is really thinking. On the telephone, there are numerous techniques that neurotypical people consistently use to communicate nonverbal cues in a telephone conversation, and they are only available partially or not at all to some people on the spectrum. The following are but a few examples. Tone of voice. The speaker's tone of voice can convey a wide range of emotions, such as happiness, sadness, anger, and excitement. Many other nuances, such as sarcasm, are conveyed this way as well. Pitch. Changes in pitch, which might escape the person on the spectrum, can imply many emotions. They can also communicate the listener's base level of enthusiasm or boredom. Volume. The volume with which a person is speaking can convey enthusiasm, frustration, or even an implied need to keep the information confidential. Volume can also be used to emphasize a point of conversation. Changes in inflection, such as a rising or falling intonation, can reveal the speaker's emotional state as well. They can be used to imply that a statement is actually a question or should be answered or challenged, and all of these cues can be missed. 
If an eyebrow is raised quizzically in the forest and nobody is around to see it, does it make any noise? Well, it doesn't on the phone. Pauses. Pauses are often inserted into speech to indicate hesitancy, emphasis, incredulity, or, as noted earlier, to seek confirmation of a statement. Pacing. The speed with which a person speaks, as well as changes in that pace, can indicate excitement or enthusiasm. Fast pacing might also be used to indicate a need to break the conversation off short due to some other pressing need or commitment. In general, those on the spectrum can often have difficulty interpreting such nonverbal cues, but the degree to which any one person is impacted is, of course, highly variable. Thanks for listening today. If you found today's short topic to be entertaining or informative, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the A Little Bit Autistic channel for future topics. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.